Retcons! Now, nobody really likes when retcons happen, and most of the time, they are caused because the writers get a little bit ahead of themselves, or by the time they get to somewhere in a story they want to tell, they realize they can't because of some pre-written thing. And it's really best to avoid them as much as possible. So let's talk about all the retcons I already have for my DC Cinematic Universe. Starting off, I said that Martian Manhunter landed on Earth like hundreds of years ago and took the alias Bloodwind, and then that's what he uses to join the army in my first Justice Society movie. It's not true anymore. Uh, he landed on Earth like 10, 20 years before the movie happened, and that is a lie that he came up with to join the military. Now, him being prompted out of hiding to fight against racial injustice is caused by World War II and the Holocaust. And why would I do this retcon? Well, because I'm gonna need the origin of a shape-shifting alien who crashes onto Earth and is raised as a slave for later on in Phase 4. Next up, because a whole bunch of people wouldn't shut the fuck up about it, Captain Boomerang is now in the first Flash movie. He's, he's just gonna be there. He's gonna have laser boomerangs. Congratulations. He's gonna be in the first Task Force X movie. And he's gonna die when Count Vertigo hits him in the face with a goddamn Vertigo Blast. And this dude fails to catch one of his laser boomerangs and lops off the top of his own head. There you go. Are you happy? You all wanted him and now he's dead. And it's your fault. My third retcon is that instead of Talia going with Bruce and the stealth team during the Crisis movie, it's Raish who goes. He goes, he has a whole talk with Batman about, you know, you gotta do things that you gotta do to save your kids because you love your kids. And he's not letting Talia do this shit because this might be actual end of the world stuff. So he goes in her stead and he fucking dies saving Bruce. And so then Bruce is inspired to sacrifice himself to save Dick and the rest of the universe. Because that is what dads do. So it's a dad message and Raish is dead. And keeping up with the theme of death I got going right now, instead of Dinah Drake being resurrected by the white light at the end of Crisis, it's not her no more. No, you're still dead, Dinah. Instead, it's Laurel. So then Laurel is now alive and the same age as the daughter she never got to raise. And that's the Black Canary movie. Moving on, I gotta establish some roommates. So in the Catwoman movie, Pamela Isley, before the whole plant thing, is her roommate and best friend. Like they knew each other in college, they're best buddies, everything is all good. And so then when Gotham City Sirens movie happens and Pamela is marrying Harleen, that's when these two meet, and it's a total thing of like, oh my god, your best friend is the best. And she's like, oh my god, your fiancé is the best. And they become best friends. And then finally, I just feel like I've done my boy Jimmy Olsen dirty. So he's he's just way more in all the Superman movies. So in the first one, he's Clark's roommate when he moves to the big city. He is the one that comes up with Clark wearing big, bulky, oversized clothes to hide the fact that he's absolutely fucking jacked. He is the one who gets the job at the Daily Planet. He is the one that introduces Clark to Lois Lane. All that fun jazz, he's Superman's best friend, he's there from day one, baby. And eventually when Clark and Lois move back to Smallville after Clark loses his powers and they decide to go raise Jonathan back at the farm, this motherfucker becomes editor-in-chief of the Daily Planet. And there you go, that's all the retcons. They're not that big, but I just wanted you guys all to know that's what's happening, okay? This is canon, this is all canon, retconned, officially.